Previously on The Bill. You made him look pathetic. You made him look like a fool. Over what? Your perversion. Shut up! Okay?
Andrew to Carl Park. There's a woman at the bottom of the stairs with serious head injuries. She's, she's unconscious. Edrington Car Park, female found with serious head injuries. Ambulance called, but female informant refused to leave her particulars. Any unit still, please. I was just ringing to let you know I'm finishing soon. Wondered if you fancied going for something to eat. Um, ring me back if you do. Cheers. Bye. I don't know why she bothers with a mobile. She never has it turned on. She? Tanya, my ex-wife. Mm. Very civilised. Going out for dinner with your ex-wife. Well, we've got kids. There's no point in them getting involved in all the warfare. I'm uh, knocking off soon. I wouldn't mind saying to me, so if she doesn't get back, it would just be a quick call to the childminder. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm knackered. It's getting late, isn't it? I think I'll just get a takeaway and uh, an early night. someone needs help? Oh, I must have been in the loo or something. For the whole time, the paramedics were here? Yeah. So, uh, what happened to her? We don't know. She may have slipped. But you get me those tapes and we'll find out, won't we? What's wrong? I think he could be covering. Who? Car park attendant. He's saying someone's nicked the tape, but old Betty's forgotten to put it in. Well, I doubt it. There's only four tapes, isn't there? All you have to do is match the relevant number to match the date. It's not hard, is it? You didn't see this guy. Oh, down a card. We have a winner. And today's victim is... Me. 
Tanya Fisher. I don't know. Why are you asking us to go around? What have you got? Okay, we'll go around straight away. Edrington Car Park. What was that name again? Tanya Fisher? Okay. Did you say Tanya Fisher? What's it to you? She's my ex-wife. What about her? She's been found at the bottom of a flight of stairs at the Edmonton car park. Is she hurt? Unconscious. She's been taken to hospital. St. Hughes. Mm. Nasty. This is not good. No, she didn't look well. It's the last thing Bradley needs. Brandon. That's his ex-wife. Do I, Dave? Another dirty chop. Hey, what's going on in there, mate? What? Oh, some woman's been found at the bottom of the stairs. And your name is, sir? Uh... Fraser. Fraser Howie. Didn't happen to see anything when you parked here earlier, did you, Mr. Howie? No. Nah. I was a bit preoccupied, though, to be honest. I can't click my wing mirror as I was parking. Did you swap numbers? I didn't get the chance. She was in a right hurry. She was off by the time I got out of my car. Do you mind if I have a look? Yeah. Okay, what have we got? I've got no witnesses for a start. What about the 999 call? The CAD message said the woman who reported it wouldn't leave a name, which sounds slightly suspicious. Not necessarily. A lot of people do that. I just don't want to get involved these days. I don't suppose there's any CCTV? There is, is there? I did speak to the car park attendant. Now, he swears he put the tapes in when he started his shift. Reckons now they've been nicked. He could just be covering his back. No, it sounds too much like a coincidence. Go and speak to the attendant again. And if he is telling the truth, then we'll know that they're stolen. We suspect Mrs. Kane has suffered an extradural hemorrhage. What? Well, it's the bleed from an artery which surrounds the outside of the brain. Is that normal after a fall? It can be. Well, what if it is a hemorrhage? Well, Mrs. Kane will be referred to a neurosurgeon who drained the bleed. Today? Will that happen today? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Kane. We'll have a better idea after the CT scan. How is she? Unconscious. They're doing some um, tests now. Have you told the kids yet? I'm not sure what to tell them. Not yet, anyway. <clears throat> Tanya's. Is there anything missing? I don't know. There's cash in here. Where'd you come back from before? What? When you came back to the Nick earlier, where'd you just come from? I'd been to see um, a guy. Why? I just need to know. You think I had something to do with this? No, 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 no. of course she doesn't, mate. Do you, Debbie? We can't rule out anything. Look, it clearly wasn't a robbery, and someone knew enough to lift the CCTV tape, so... I'd been to see a guy who had some info on the Murison case for me. And this guy's name is... Bill. Does Bill have a surname? Lewis. Bill Lewis. And he'll verify this? He wasn't there. I waited outside his flat for a bit, and then I came back. I didn't go anywhere near Edrington Car Park. All right. Thanks. Don't look at me. Try finding the freak who's been sending Tanya hate mail. We will, we will. I've got to get a drink. If that's okay with you. Mm-hmm. I'm speechless. You know what I mean. The heavy-handed routine. Wait, you can't believe that Brandon had anything to do with this, surely? No, I don't know, Ken. We don't even know what happened to Tanya yet. Maybe she slipped and fell. And? Well, look, Brandon and Tanya were divorced, right? Which suggests there's not a lot of love lost between them. And from what Kathy Bradford told me earlier, Brandon's got some temper on him. Brandon has. 
When he came back to the Nick earlier, he, he made a big show of ringing Tanya, leaving her a message and asking her out for dinner. So, what are you trying to say? I've got two children. You can't go making plans to go out when you've got childcare to arrange, can you? You should know that as well as me. I'm not saying it was Brandon. But? We don't know it wasn't. Look, just because Brian has a colleague does not mean he's not capable. And you've got to agree, there's plenty of one of coppers around. Yeah, but Brandon isn't one of them, all right? Right, and you know him so well. Hey, is there any news on Brandon's ex-wife? Uh, she's still unconscious. I was only talking to her yesterday. She came in here asking for Kathy, but Kathy was out. Do you know what about? Well, she wanted to know if there was anything going on between her and Brandon, but I told her if there was, it was only in Kathy's head. Why do you think Tony wants to know this? Well, she wants to get back together with Brandon, isn't it? Thanks. Well, I didn't know Kathy fancied Brandon. She done it the other way around. They slept together once. Oh, and Kathy didn't want to continue. Brandon got really angry and threw a cup of coffee over him. Nobody tells me anything. Oh, and I thought he knew him really well. Touche. Okay, so if Tanya wanted to speak to Kathy and Robbie told her exactly what she wanted to know. The next logical step would be for her to go and speak to Brandon, wouldn't it? Paul, look, I'm really sorry I didn't ring you last night. I had a migraine and I got up this morning. My car's been stolen. Look, you're not going to believe what I've got to tell you. Anyway, just said it's had my car's Come been in. stolen. Brendan's wife was found in a pool of blood yesterday. No. Yes. What's her name? Tanya. What happened? Well, she was found at the bottom of some car park stairs. Possibly. Oh, CID are investigating, but they don't know whether it was an accident or if she was pushed. But well, I tell you what, it's Brendan I've been sorry for. He's got to deal with those kids on his own. She's not dead, Cathy. Sorry, I thought you said pool of blood. Well, how is she then? Well, she's in a coma, but don't look good by all accounts. Yes, sir, can I help you? Fraser Howie, I'm here to see PC Tate. I need to give a statement about a woman who clipped my car last night in the car park where they found that lady. Do you think she was pushed? It's most likely to have been carried out by someone known to the victim. And Brandon's got no alibi for the time Tanya fell. He told you where he was. He can't prove it, though, can he? Uh, look, I've just heard about Brandon's ex. And? Uh, I was wondering if there's anything I can do. It's not a CSU matter. No, I know, but I'd like to help. I don't think you and Brandon got on. Well, we've had our ups and downs, but he's a good copper and a colleague. No, I can't use you. You've got your own responsibilities. Look, I can do all the donkey work and let you get on with a real investigation. Yeah, sounds good to me. Have you cleared this with Danny Glaze? Of course. All right, then. Well, is there any CCTV I could trawl through? No, uh, no tapes in the machines. Which means negligence or foul play. Let's listen to the 999 call. Sounds strange. Why is she whispering? Well, maybe she's in shock. You're not going to be calm when you see a dead body, are you? Do you think this woman was involved? Not necessarily, but we won't know until we find her. Are you going to do that? Why is this? 20 questions. But we've, uh, we've asked for a list of calls made from the phone box both before and after. Maybe somebody saw her. All right. So, it's back to Brandon. Brandon? He's our prime suspect. He's got no motive. You're basing everything on his lack of alibi. No, I'm not. I know for a fact Brandon's got quite a temper on him. Hey. I came as soon as I heard. Are you bearing up? I can't believe this has happened. Debbie McAllister was in here earlier asking me where I was when Tanya fell. Debbie's a bitch. I suppose they're only doing what I do. How's Tanya? Kathy, they're not sure whether she'll make it.
She looks terrible, doesn't she? You've got to stay positive. We we're just getting everything sorted. I even thought there might be a chance for us. What will I tell the kids if... I know exactly what you're going through. I lost my husband. I didn't know you were married. Oh, yeah, well, why would you? I don't talk about it. What happened? Well, it was real well when romance, when I lived in Hong Kong. We met in this club. I went back to his that night and I never went back to my apartment again. What was his name? Peter. He was a doctor. He was so handsome. It happened when we were on honeymoon. It was a car crash. I survived. He didn't. We were only married for four days. Brandon at the hospital. I thought you might need some support. Ah, oh, it's really good of you. You're a nice mate, isn't you? Was Ros there? Ros? Yeah, you know, Tanya's girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. No, she wasn't. And he wouldn't want her to be there either. I think of what her and Tanya got up to. Makes me feel sick. It's disgusting. Oh, sorry, I agree with Ken. See, Brandon hasn't got it in him to do something like this. Let's consider the facts, shall we? Tanya was disqualified from driving. Now, we've accounted for all the cars that were here, yeah? So it begs the question, what was she doing in the car park? Well, maybe she was just cutting through to get to the shops. Maybe. Look, we've got loads of questions and no answers, right? Which is why we've got to keep on looking. And maybe she just fell. Okay, let's try. Kathy, you be Tanya. What? Get on the top step. Oh, I don't think this is going to help. Well, you said you wanted to help. Ken, you get up there. Oh, for goodness Look, if there was a struggle and she was pushed, yeah? If she was pushed, that would explain the blood that was here on the wall. If she slipped, then surely she wouldn't be so shocked if she would have stopped herself up there. All right. Right. So, Ken, you pretend to push Kathy, and Kathy go through the motions of falling. Whoa, 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 are you all right? No, I can't do this anymore. No, I know. No what? Who pushed Tanya? I'm surprised you haven't worked out for yourselves. It's Roz. Look, I might be talking rubbish, I don't know, but Roz has got more of a motive to want Tanya dead than Brandon has. It's not been proven, but I think she was behind that hate mail that Tanya received. Hate mail? Yep. Brandon told me. Look, it's worth checking where Rod was, so you go and speak to her. And I need to know all the facts because I'm speaking to D.I. Elvins today from MIT. MIT? She's not dead? Yet. Look, they've traced the last calls made from the phone box. Now, the last call made prior to the 999 call was made by Mrs. Mullins from 30 Atley Road, just around the corner from the phone box. So, I shall go and check it out, all right? Good. Honey, what are you doing here? You all right? How are you getting on? You know. I don't suppose you have any idea how the investigation's going. I haven't, sorry. I'm here to pick up Tanya's clothes. Right. I thought Debbie would have done that yesterday. You OK? Yeah. Well, I don't really know who to speak to, to be honest. D.S. McAllister just barked this order at me and then gone. Yeah, sounds like Debbie. Um, it's 
Speak to one of the nurses, they'll have the clothes already backed up, and then you pass them on to the CSE. Thanks. Brandon, why don't you go home and get some sleep? I need to stay here. But there's no point making yourself ill. I wouldn't be able to sleep anyway. What would I do if I lose her? That is not going to happen. It could do. You never met her. No. Well, you know, we have our ups and downs. But, um, recently we've been getting on really well. Well, is there anything I can do? Do you need to hand me the kids? No. My parents are looking after them. Thank you for the offer, though. Well, if there's anything at all, call me. Miss Fisher's condition is still serious. There's no way I can agree to this. We need access to her so we can ascertain what happened. I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait. Fine. Well, I need to ask you a few more questions. Do you notice any bruising on Tanya's chest that would suggest that she was pushed to death and slipped? I'm afraid anything I say would be a matter of conjecture. I'm not a forensic scientist. Miss Fisher had a very nasty fall. Her body suffered a lot of bruising. I'm not in a position to guess where they came from. Which is exactly why you should give access to our forensic specialist. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, Mr. Kane. Your colleagues here would like us to let the crime scene examiner have a look at Tanya. I... I don't think that's a very good idea at the moment. Absolutely. Can't you at least wait till she's conscious? Not really, no. We need to get to the evidence before it's corrupted. Corrupted? You mean before she dies, don't you? You never fail to amaze me. I'm only trying to do my job. No, you're not. No, you're trying to make an impression. You want to crack this case so you can score brownie points with the DCI? Because you and me both know, don't we, that if Tanya dies and this gets passed over to MIT, you... You make me sick. We should go. Yeah, you should before I say something I regret. Oh, don't let me stop you. Go on. Listen. We both know you're hanging on in CID by your fingertips. I am not prepared to let you endanger my wife's life so you can advance your career. Yeah, but Tanya's your ex-wife. So? So I don't need your permission to gain access to Tanya. You have no rights. I'm going to speak to Tanya's parents. Yeah, you do that. And you'll see they'll say exactly as I have. You know where I'm going. Talk to Mrs. Mullins. Maybe she saw something. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed then, eh? Yeah. Oh, hey, hello, Ken? Um, why don't we do a swap? Uh, you speak to Ross and I'll talk to this Mrs. Mullins. Why? No reason. Is something the matter? Yeah, there is, actually. Go on, then. I can't speak to Ross. Why is that, then? Well, we've met before, we didn't get on. It might compromise the conversation. You're only going to ask where she was yesterday. Yeah, I know, but it's... Look, wouldn't it be better if a more experienced detective talked to her? I mean, if my hunch is right, she's not going to confess, is she? What are you saying, Cathy? That someone like you might be able to draw more out of her. I don't want to mess it up. What'd you say? OK. Give us a lift, then. I'll talk to Mrs. Phone Box, that's what I'm good at. Routine. Right, the last recorded time we have a sighting of Tanya is 18.15. This was when the receptionist went home. The receptionist was surprised Tanya was still there because she usually left around five every day. So did the receptionist ask why Tanya was still there? I was just coming to that. Now, Tanya said she was meeting someone, but she didn't say who. Did the receptionist have any ideas? No. Tanya seems to keep her private life just that. Now, I want one of you to go to this receptionist and speak to her, tell her to look in Tanya's diary, see if there's anything crossed out. Can she remember anything, any plans that she'd made or mentioned earlier in the week? Find out who her friends are. Now, apparently she'd issued some redundancies, so she wouldn't be that popular. Most importantly, we need to find out who she was meeting that day. Thank you.
She's loving every minute of that, isn't she? Say that again. But she is going to be so disappointed if this turns out to be an accident. Acrimonious Ros and Tanya? I think so. Brandon and Tay for sure. How long were they together? A couple of years, I reckon. I know it broke his heart when he found out his wife was queer. So how well do you know her? Not very well. Just enough to know that she's a bit of sour-faced dyke. Good enough to push her ex-girlfriend down the stairs and cover it up. I reckon so. No, no, everything's under control, Gov. Now, the heel of Tanya's shoe has left a scratch mark on the face of one of the steps. So that indicates that she fell with some force, which suggests that someone else was there. So I've sent Uniform out to her workplace to see if they can find out who she was planning to meet. Well, hopefully someone will remember something. <clears throat> well, I, I thought I'd be better off here at the base. I mean, I'm trying to work out if she made any irregular movements that day. No, but I do know that Brandon's relationship with Tanya was very messy, and their split up was acrimonious. You know that um, she left him for another woman, and at one stage they, there was a potential custody battle on the cards as well. And more recently, she's been receiving some hate mail. Mm, not really. I mean, she's not that popular at work, but then who is? I, I don't need acting D.I. Nixon. I can cope on my own. Okay. What are you still hovering around for? I just wondered how Tanya was. What do you need to know for? Because I like Brandon. I just wondered. Look, you can see I am leading a very important investigation here, Robbie, which could turn out to be a murder hunt. Now, I haven't got time to be gossiping with the station receptionist, so if you don't mind... <laughs> Uh, we spoke to the cleaner, Sarge. She said she's not certain, but she thinks she saw Tanya leave the building about 7 o'clock. No, but she's not positive. No, and she's not too sure about the time, either. Was she with anyone? That's the thing. The cleaner reckons she was talking to someone when she left. Male or female? She didn't hear. Uh... Anything else? No, no. Thank you. <laughs> no sign of Roz. How are you getting on with Mrs Mullins? A waste of space. Mrs Mullins barely knows her own name, let alone anything else. Oh, no, I'm just um, setting up here. Yeah, I'll see you back at the station. Who said you could show your face here? I've got every right to see her. You've got no right. You're no one. Come on. Keep away from my family. We don't want you here. We don't need you here. Easy drawn back yet. I haven't seen him. Shocking news about Tanya, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a coincidence as well. The timing of it all. I mean, one minute she's in here asking questions about you and Brandon. And the next, she's pushed down a flight of stairs. What are you implying? Come on. Have you got something to say? Spit it out. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, and I think you do. I'm just thinking out loud, love. Oh, Kathy. They managed to find your car? Yeah, they found it. Fantastic. No, not really. It's a burnt out wreck. Ken, will you escort Ros to her car, please? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Just happened to be passing, did you? I spoke to Tanya's mother. She gave me written permission to obtain the samples I need. I can't believe you're doing this. You know the job as well as I do. I told you forensics could wait until she's stable. If anything happens to Tanya, I'm blaming you. All I'm trying to do is help. Hopefully the tests will reveal who pushed Tanya down the stairs. After all, that is 
It's the million dollar question, isn't it? Brought you this. Come on, take it. Just wondered how you were feeling. Look, don't worry about your car. Car's on your lump of metal. That can be replaced. It's not the car. Sorry? I said it's not the car. It's not why I'm crying. What's up, then? I've done something terrible. I know you have. You know? I've worked it out. I know what you've done. Well, you were right about the HIV. HIV? When I said it was HIV positive, I made it all up. Right. I, I didn't think that was what you were going to tell me. You think it had something to do with Tanya, don't you? She came in yesterday. I saw her. She was asking questions. She wanted to speak to you. Yeah. And I did on the phone. So you weren't there when she fell? No! I can't believe you thought I was. Sorry. I suppose it's only what I deserve. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Going round saying you were HIV positive. That was a lie to get Brandon into bed, wasn't it? brief night and then he dumped me because of Tanya and the kids. It must have been really difficult for you. Yeah, it was. But it's nothing compared to the pain that Brandon's going through now. Oh, he's got to stand there and watch the woman he loves die. You know if Tanya does pass away, He's going to need all the help he can get. Someone he can lean on. You could be that person. Be his rock, you mean? Yeah, that's all I'll ever be. You don't know that. No, Brennan and me, it's never going to work, is it? Why? Well, look at me. You won't fancy me. <gasps> You're really attractive. You are. Oh, yeah, well, tell me why I've never been married or engaged or... <laughs> I've never actually had a serious boyfriend. Brandon's always had it in for Tanya. Why? Well, because not only did she leave him, she left him for me. And he pretended to be all PC about it, but I could tell it was an act. Being homophobic doesn't mean he pushed her down the stairs. What about the trumped-up drink-driving charge? Trumped-up? It's all very convenient. They have a blazing row because Tanya gets a job up north, and then the next thing, she's nicked at the wheel by one of Brandon's colleagues. Drinking and driving is a crime. Oh, I know. But Tanya was set up. That's all they all say. I was with her all day. She had a couple of wines, but that was it. She was on orange juice the rest of the day. Had someone spiked her? They must have. Tanya had just told him we were planning on moving to Scotland. He hit the roof. Accused her of trying to take his kids off him. Called her all sorts. Well, Tanya loses her licence and Scotland's off. Brandon gets his own way. Again. When I saw him at the hospital, how upset he was. I gave up all hope I had left. For you and him? Tanya he loves. Even if she did die, then he won't want me. I accept that. So you see, I have no reason to want her dead, have I? What? I never suggested you wanted Tanya out of the way. 
Exactly. I thought you might have been there when she fell down the stairs, but I never said you pushed her. Why would you think that? No, no, no. I, just, I was just saying that I haven't got a motive, have I? Tanya's well liked. She's very popular. Then all of a sudden, there's this campaign against her. Drink driving. Funny phone calls. An abusive male. Only someone with a warped mind would do that, wouldn't they? Mm-hmm. So instead of talking to me, why aren't you questioning him? Hey, you're a bit het up in there, mate. Wouldn't you be? The McAllister treating your wife's body like a corpse. And Roz is winding me up too. Her and Tanya aren't even together anymore. She's got no right to be here. Me news on Tanya. They're doing more tests now. Something to do with the reactions. I think they said I don't I don't understand half of what they're saying. Come on. I'm sure she'll pull through, yeah. You still love her, don't you? Never stopped. Not even when she was seeing Roz. Must have hit you pretty hard, your wife leaving you for another woman. It did. But any grudge I felt against Tanya is long gone. We split up a long time ago, Ken. I'm over it. Maybe you should try questioning someone whose wounds are a bit raw. Like Rose. I'm sure she's behind the hate mail Tanya's been receiving. Ken, can I have a word? Oh, not now, will really, you please? Is it written about Kathy Bradford? What about her? I think you should ask her where she was when Tanya fell. Kathy Bradford? Yeah, I was talking to her before. Ah. Kathy, um, I need a word. I've just spoken to Roz, and she reckons Brandon set up Tanya for the drink charge charge. Brandon, no. Spiked her, then told the police that she'd been drinking. Look, it's not Brandon's style. Well, maybe he wanted to pay her back. I can't see it myself. Kathy, sit down. Has Brandon ever been violent towards you? No. The coffee incident. Well, that was a one-off. It was circumstances. You'd be saying you deserved it soon. No, the coffee, it was an accident. Well, that's not what you said to me at the time. Yeah, I was upset. Stop covering for him. No, I'm not, honestly. Look, throwing a cup of coffee over you is assault. Now, I've just seen him down the hospital with his hands round Rosie's throat. So if you ask me, the likeable, affable Brandon that we all know is a joke. The real Brandon Kane is a very violent man. Think about it. Ken, I need a word. Yeah. Cathy! Can it wait? No, can I have a word now, please? It'll only take a minute. Just routine. But I have to ask you what you were doing last night. Why? Come on, you know the score. I have to check everyone who knows Tanya. Oh, like I said before, I don't really know her. Well, you know of her. So? I was in bed. At seven o'clock? Mm. I've had a really hard day here and it brought on one of my heads. One of your heads? Yeah, migraines. I've suffered from them since I was a kid. So I went home and I went to bed. And I got up this morning and my car has been stolen. Okay, thanks. All right? Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Yeah, I reckon he'll be back about 2.30. I promise you, as soon as he gets in the... What are you doing? He said again. That was him. What did you say to him? Nothing. Liar! You practically accused me of trying to murder Tanya. You're going to pay for this. And the news on Tanya. They're in there doing more tests now. I wish there was something I could do. There is. 
tell CID to keep off my back. Ken was here earlier. Debbie sent him. On top of everything else, she thinks I might have pushed Tanya. She's really got it in for you, hasn't she? I reckon it's because I knocked her back earlier. Knocked her back? I think she asked me out. Now she's trying to pin this on you. That sounds stupid. No, it doesn't. She's a psycho. Everybody knows that. I'll tell you something, though. I'm going to launch my own investigation. If this was deliberate, I'm going to find out who it was and I'm going to tear them limb from limb. Excuse me, Mr. Kane? Yeah. What's for you? Cheers. Have you spoken to Jack Meadows? Yeah, he said we should contact you. Tell me what you've got then. Tanya Fisher, she's unconscious. No witnesses. Yet there's lots of indications to suggest that this wasn't an accident. Go on. Okay, the woman that made the 999 call, she didn't leave her particulars. Tanya was disqualified from driving. What was she doing in the car park? No valuables were found missing from her bag or her person. And more significantly, the car park CCTV tapes were missing. So, I spoke to the attendant. He was adamant he put new tapes in that morning. So, someone has pushed Tanya, saw the cameras, removed the tapes. Possible suspects? Well, there's a few disgruntled employees with a grudge. Previous partner's got an alibi, but the uh, ex-husband, TDC, Brandon Kane. Tell me more about this ex-husband. Brandon. Well, he, he can't give his whereabouts at the time she fell. Motive? Acrimonious split. She left him for another woman, yet Brandon's saying he's hoping to get back with her. I think that's highly unlikely if she's a lesbian. This other woman? Well, I've just come back from the hospital and Brandon was threatening her. So, he's at St. Hugh's now playing the worried partner. I don't believe a word of it. Ken! Did you have a word with Cathy? Yeah, did you? And what did she say? Did she say where she was when Tanya was put? I can't tell you that, Robbie, can I? Yeah, I know that. But come on. Do you think she had anything to do with it? No comment. Bad news. Her condition's improved. It's improved? Tanya, can you hear me? Baby, you're gonna be okay. The doctor said there's a good chance she'll pull through. That's, that's brilliant. And then she can tell us exactly what happened. Next time on The Bill. I don't think Brandon's the Mr. Nice Guy he pretends to be. And if it turns out that Tanya was pushed, could Cathy have a motive? You've got nothing to hide, so stop worrying. Yeah, uh, yeah, I ordered a cab 15 minutes ago to Heathrow Airport.